Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, we're in the Christmas season, but unfortunately, the uh, subject here is not a very Christmassy subject. Uh, the pre-budget documents released this week by the Premier paint a dire picture of the state of Bermuda's economy and its public finances. We are living with the consequences of a government that has lost control of the public purse and put the island on a path to financial ruin. The prospects for growth of the two pillars of our economy are weak. Our international business sector, which has been growing in other countries, is not growing here, a result of government policies and attitudes that have made international business feel unwelcome and damaged Bermuda's position as a preferred business center. We are on a debt treadmill that continues to get worse. In 2010-2011, the financial year that ended in March was yet another year in which the government failed to live within its means recording a deficit of $269 million. It was the third consecutive year we have spent more than we have earned. The trend continues through this year, meaning we are headed for a fourth straight budget deficit. The cost of the interest on government debt, currently $192,000 a day, has effectively hobbled its ability to help people in need. And it will get worse. We now project the debt will cost taxpayers about $219,000 a day a year from now. For anyone wanting to understand what this means, they need look no further than government's decisions to lay off teachers, increase the cost of public transportation, cut back support for charities, provide police with less than they need, shut down public transport routes, stop overtime pay, postpone road repair, uh, repairs, and charge excessive duty at the airport on imported goods. Now, the government is floating moves to extend duty to online shopping. The point here is that the government will continue to look for ways to come after your money. This is the reality of the situation they've created for themselves and now for you, the Bermuda taxpayer. It could even get worse. We are exceedingly fortunate that interest rates remain at historically low levels, but we cannot count on that, and we can't count on them to remain low forever. Interest rates will someday rise, and Bermuda's vulnerability on this point cannot be downplayed. A rise in interest rates will mean paying even more for our still growing debt a rise that could easily lead government to a cash crisis. Indeed, the government's cash crunch is already extreme because it is borrowing money to cover its day-to-day -day expenses. Here's how bad that is. Think of a householder using a credit card to pay for his mortgage, for Belco, for groceries, and other daily expenses. It may work in the short term, but it is not sustainable. It cannot continue. As a country, Bermuda has never been more vulnerable, certainly not since the Second World War. We have few options because the government turned its back 
on our history of careful money management, a history that extended right up to the Premier's immediate predecessor, her father, the Honorable C. Eugene Cox. But under this finance minister, our economy has become significantly weaker. We have seen a massive loss of opportunity and decisions by international business to shift their operations to other jurisdictions. We are experiencing significant unemployment for the first time with no prospect of improvement. Despite the seriousness of the situation, the government offers people of Bermuda no plan, no way out of the hole that it has put us in. The government's pre-budget documents, uh, excuse me, the government's pre-budget documents released this week offer nothing but more debt, higher debt payments, increased taxation, no meaningful job growth, and a lot of excuses. Bermudians must ask themselves if this is what they want for their families. If this is the direction they want for Bermuda, they have to ask, what kind of country are we making for our children? The One Bermuda Alliance believes government is, that believes that Bermuda is much better than the record of this government. We believe the people of Bermuda deserve better. We need change to get there. The most important change we can make is a change in government. Only with a change in government can we give local and international business the opportunity to recommit to Bermuda, to regain conf confidence in Bermuda as a place in which to do business. Right now, business is leaking away. Local businesses are contracting and international businesses are moving elsewhere. We are at a fork in the road and people will have to decide what is in their best interest and indeed what is in Bermuda's best interest. Whether to stick with a government that has presided over a major erosion in the island's business environment with loss of jobs and income all around or with a new government that can provide steady sensible leadership with a fresh start for all concerned. My message today is that we do not have to give in to these circumstances created by the current government. All is not lost. We can turn this thing around, but it will require change. In our reply to the, the throne speech, our leader, Craig Cannonier, outlined an economic plan to revitalize conditions to grow the economy in a manner that will grow jobs and paychecks and reduce debt over time. I invite you to look again at what he said. But the most important thing we can do, the thing that will get our economy back on track faster than anything else is to change the government. Only with that change can Bermuda send a convincing, credible signal to business people everywhere that we want their business, that we want to grow again, that we want businesses to flourish so there are enough jobs and career opportunities for our people and enough revenues to pay down the huge debt. Without change, we will only get more of the same. Bermuda needs something better.